last week. Um, thank you. So we're really excited to have you all here today. This session is going to be more of a walkthrough um, of all the product features. So it's more training focused. Um, hopefully, you all leave this room today ready to try out infrastructure, infrastructure and know exactly um, all the features it has. And your 30-day trial can be um, made easier, basically. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to Matt. Um, who is our lead engineer, and he's going to walk you through um, some of the um, preface points of the demo, like the agent. All right. Uh, necessary legal slide. I won't read it. Um, all right. So we're going to walk through basically four categories of use cases. Uh, so first of all, we're going to talk about how to use infrastructure just to kind of get a sense by looking at it live uh, how your infrastructure is doing. Then we're going to talk about how to monitor your inventory and match uh, matchup event changes with your metrics, and then how to extend what we provide in the UI with your own dashboards and alerts that cover it, and then talk a bit about uh, how we extend to cover other tools that you might be using as well. So first of all, before we jump into the UI, I want to talk about uh, the data that we gather and where it comes from. So uh, as uh, Karishma alluded to, it is based on an agent. You install the agent, and it starts reporting up metrics. It's uh, just, if you're curious, it's a quick install. All you have to do is basically add a config file that has your license key, and then install a standard Linux or Windows package, and you're pretty much good to go. There's some much optional configuration you can do on top of that, but that's the basics. And uh, once you've done that, then you start getting this information. So the first category of stuff that it reports is inventory. And by that, we basically mean the current state of your host. This covers things like the list of packages that are installed, uh, the list of users that are logged in, what services are running uh, for Windows, what updates are installed, things like that. And uh, for each of these, we track it over time. And so we know that you know a week ago, what was on your machine as opposed to right now. And then whenever any of that changes, we know to generate an infrastructure event. And this basically is. Um, and this, this uh, correlates to what's an insight. So if you're using insights, you can go here, and this is the name of the event type. But uh, infrastructure events are not only changes to the state. So for example, you would have things like, you know, so-and-so logged in, or this package was installed, or this package's version changed from uh, 1.8 to 2.0, or something like that. But we also add anything else that we see happening. And that's, you know, hence the generic name infrastructure event. It's not always inventory or current configuration changing. So uh, for example, we'll show you in there when your agents are going online or offline, or when you have alerts active, or things like that. And then uh, the next category of information reported by the agent is metrics. And this covers basically the health stats of your hosts. Um, so just starting from the top, we track the overall system uh, memory and CPU usage and load. For each process, we track how it's doing. For each network interface, for each storage device, we're going to report those basic numbers and their I.O. and uh, you know, how full your disks are as well. But on the bottom, you'll see each category of information has uh, the same bullet point for common metadata. And what that means is that as we monitor your host, we pull in a few different things about it. We'll collect, for example, any EC2 tags about it. We'll know what instance type it is. Uh, we know what version of Linux is running on it or Windows. And then we track that same metadata along with every single piece of data that we report in our UI. So if I'm looking at the inventory view, I can filter by, for example, uh, AWS region or one of my custom tags or something like that. Uh, if I'm looking at metrics, the same filters apply. I can use basically the same filtering anywhere I go in the product. And that makes it really powerful in terms of how you can report or slice and dice on your data. So all right. Uh, the first uh, thing we'll do is just do a quick tour of the basic health stats that we collect. And uh, so first I'm going to talk about metrics and how to view those. And then we're going to talk about how to see processes. So we're going to do a lot of switching back and forth between that and the demo. Make that a bit bigger. OK. Um, so this is basically the landing page. This is where you go, let's say I just installed infrastructure. I've got, say, 33 hosts reporting. Can you guys see that OK in the back, or should I zoom in more? Good? OK. Um, yeah, so this is showing me just a general average of the health of my systems. And just looking at the controls that are available here, 
I can pop open the list of hosts that are reporting. For each of these, I can see, uh, let's see, what's this guy? I see that it's uh, something Kafka.meatballs. Um, meatballs, fun fact, was our, our code name before we launched, which stands for mean time between loss of sleep, if anyone is curious. Um, I think they just wanted to call it after food or something. But uh, in any case, so I can see the basic information about this host. I can see what instance type it is, where it's running in AWS, but I can also see any custom tags that I've applied to it and a bunch of other stuff that you know, I won't go into, but there's plenty of other information there at a glance if you need it. I could also see, uh, and I don't have any active right now, but if there were any alerts happening, I could pop this open and see which hosts were affected by uh, which conditions I had set up. But I'll go ahead and add a filter. Let's say that I'm responsible for our Kafka cluster, and so I'm going to switch to that. I just start typing here. And uh, you know, even though Kafka starts appearing in host names, it basically finds any values that match that. It's just a standard um, type ahead. So I'll go ahead and pick a uh, role of Kafka. Role comes from a tag that we add to every instance. Uh, there's two things that we use, and they're pretty good examples of what you can use the tagging feature for. On every instance, we say what role it is and which environment it's part of. And once I have those two things, I can go in the UI and um, you know, that, that allows me to slice and dice using most of the stuff I would care about. But all right, so I've limited it to just our Kafka uh, cluster. Let me then, so this is still showing an average, but it's a fewer host. It's showing three hosts now instead of uh, whatever it was, 33. So now I'll use this group by uh, option. This allows me to, if you're familiar with uh, Nurkul, this is basically the equivalent of facet. This allows me to show rather than the average of all the hosts, um, one line per, uh, per value of something. So I'll go ahead and do host name. So we just get individual hosts here. And now I see how each of my Kafka servers is doing. I also get the load average and the memory usage uh, as well on this page. Now, let me flip that a second. So I filtered to one role and I've shown the host name. But if I instead go back to all my hosts and maybe I want to see just a quick glance of how everything is doing, I'll go ahead and group by role so that now I get one line per, uh, per cluster, essentially. And so now I can see at a glance that, well, Elastic searches pretty busy, and it spiked at this point in time, but everything else was okay. So between those two options, between filtering and grouping, uh, you can basically report on this, this data any way you want. Um, so we also have the standard time controls. I could zoom out and view a pretty wide time range. I can see, yeah, it turns up on there, all right. I can see when alerts have been active. If I zoom in on here, I can, uh, you know, really easily see when alert started. I also see at the top here what we call the event timeline. This shows me whenever any of those infrastructure events I was talking about earlier were happening. Uh, so for example, if I just hover over this, I see, oh, there was a, a service change right around the time when this alert started or something like that. But uh, I'll go ahead and zoom back out. And we'll go to the processes page. Um, I'm going to skip them in the demo, but basically on the network page and storage page, you can break down information about how full your disks are, um, how much I.O. your devices or your network interfaces are doing, stuff like that. Uh, but I'm going to jump to the processes page since it's probably the most interesting. So here is, uh, we, we like to call this almost a distributed top with history. Like at any point in time, I can go back and see, all right, what processes are running on this host or across a bunch of hosts at you know, 2 p.m. last Friday or something like that. There may be, there was an alert there that I need to debug. Um, so right off the bat, it's showing me what's using the most CPU. I see that I've got, you know, as expected, based on the other page, I've got Java on Elasticsearch using a bunch of CPU. But let me uh, go ahead and filter this using a bunch of the attributes we have here. One pretty useful one is called contained. And I can use this to restrict it to only Docker containers. So we monitor every process uh, pretty much the same way. We'll collect CPU and memory usage for it. Uh, but if it's a Docker container, then we ask the Docker API for a bit more information about it. And so we can pull out things like the labels that are attached to the container or uh, the image that it's using, things like that. And so if I look here, I can see that uh, you know I've got a bunch of different Docker containers, but I'll group it by uh, label that we use for the service name. And now I can see I've got, for example, uh, six instances of this metrics downsampler container running. And uh, <clears throat> let me go ahead and filter down to that guy. 
and I can get a sense for how they're distributed. So I can see this metrics down sampler service is running, well, it seems to be pretty well distributed. I see two of them are on the same host and I could then group that by host name if I had a bunch that didn't, you know, if I had a hundred and they didn't really fit well on a table. I can get a quick summary. All right, I've got two of this running on this guy. On average, it's using that much memory or that much CPU. And the same general filtering and, and grouping concept applies here, right? Uh, any, any metadata you want to be able to filter your processes by, uh, if they're Docker containers, you can add it to uh, your, your container labels. I could search uh, by username. So one fun use case for this page is we might have seen an event in our event feed that so-and-so logged in. I can then go filter to that username. And I don't know if I have any good examples, but I'll just filter to one I know is there, which is Cassandra. Um, it's just a service user account. But if I filter down to one username, I can see what processes that user was, was running during some time period and what the resource utilization of those processes was. And I think that's a pretty good initial summary of the uh, process metrics. So I'll pass it over to Karishma for the next chunk. Sweet. Thank you. Um, so I'm actually going to walk us through. So now that we have a high level overview of what metrics the agent collects, um, I'm going to walk us through um, how you can use these metrics along with the life state monitoring features that infrastructure provides to get better context of not just what's changing, but why it's changing. So I'm going to walk us through um, config change tracking with a live event feed and a real-time searchable inventory. So the events timeline that Matt referenced earlier is um, displayed up here. And it's basically the shade of blue indicates how many um, events are occurring in that time block. So if I want to get a detailed view of um, a specific time range or just see everything that's happening in real time in my feature, I mean, um, I'm sorry, in my infrastructure, I can basically click on the events page. Um, and it gives me a high level count I'll zoom in here. It gives me a high level count or aggregate of how many events are, are occurring. Um, and you can see this page basically update in real time. So it refreshes to give you a live event feed. It's kind of like a Facebook um, wall for, or I guess Facebook home feed for um, your infrastructure. So I can narrow down to a specific set of events I care about. So if I just want to see my packet changes, I can also go back in time to look at a wider range and or select the custom time range. Or I can search for a particular event. So this is basically an event feed that's uh, logging every change across your infrastructure. And I really want to emphasize, so earlier this morning we heard um, Jim Stoneham emphasize the importance of config changes and how config changes cause um, have been known to cause tons of issues. Um, quoted by Gartner, 40% of the issues, including the New York Stock Exchange um, outage, was caused by a config change. So um, infrastructure and the infrastructure agent seamlessly logs every config change, kernel setting changes, any changes with your packages, host services, processes, everything is logged here. And um, you can basically if I click on, if I'm interested in seeing um, the packet change that occurred on this block here, this time block, I can simply click on it and um, narrow down to packages and or just search for package to see exactly that change that I care about. So this is providing you visibility into what's happening uh, in your infrastructure while correlating it with metrics like Matt previously demoed. So that's your events feed. Um, Moving on to the inventory. So you have um, an agent that's basically sitting on your host. Once this agent is um, installed on your host, it gets an idea or I guess an image of what's living on your host, what's installed on your host, what's running on your host, and it logs that as an inventory. It also refreshes this image to get the most real-time inventory that it can. Um, and any delta that's produced is basically logged as an event that we just saw. So the inventory is basically a, a real-time searchable index of everything that's um, installed across your infrastructure, everything that's running, everything that's consuming um, resources. So this is particularly useful, um, and I demoed this briefly yesterday, but let's say um, 
there is a zero day vulnerability. So the heart bleed bug or even the Dorica vulnerability that um, some of us witnessed um, recently. But you can basically use this page and the search bar to type open SSL. Note that I have no filters applied. So I just type this and you can see how quickly and how fast it returned results to me for all the packages of OpenSSL I have installed across my infrastructure. And it's also showing me um, all the, the different releases and the different versions of the OpenSSL packages. So I can clearly see that 13 hosts have an outdated release, a very old one compared to the other ones. And I can click on this to get the list of hosts that, de that need the patch deployed to them, thus fixing my issue. Um, you can also, so the filters that Matt spoke about earlier on the compute page, um, you can note that they actually carry across all of the pages. So if I filter down to, um, let's say I just want to view my hosts in the US East 1A AWS region, if I navigate to the inventory page, the filters persist and carry over to show me just the inventory for the hosts in that region. So at, and similarly, the events in that region. So I have the most real time view of exactly what I want to see seamlessly. So I just wanted to emphasize that. Um, so there you have it. That's basically the events feed um, that tracks the live state of your host along with any config changes, as well as a real time searchable indexed inventory. So with that, I'll pass it back to Matt. Okay. Uh, so we've basically done a quick tour of most of the UI, and we've got a couple more things to show you in there uh, in a bit. But I wanted to take a second and talk a bit more about, you know, if you're not at your computer uh, poking around at our UI, how can you use infrastructure to still monitor your hosts? So uh, that brings us to two categories of things, uh, building up dashboards that you can have up showing on a TV somewhere or whatever, or uh, configuring alerts that will proactively let you know when we see anything that's wrong. Uh, so first of all, let's dig into alerts. Uh, here's a, a quick quote from uh, the uh, engineering lead of the Meatballs team, who's called Pancakes. We've got a food theme going here. And uh, that's not his real name, by the way. But uh, he, uh, he likes to say, New Relic allows you to organize your infrastructure the way you already think about it. And that is emphasizing the fact that everything is based on filtering by tags. If I'm thinking about our Kafka cluster or our Cassandra cluster, I'm not thinking about, oh, let's see, server-1b.cassandra.prod.com you know, and then server-1c or whatever. Like, I'm not thinking of a list of host names. I'm thinking of all the servers that are my Cassandra servers. And so as I go to our UI, I want to have the same experience. Um, let's see, do this account. So. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about here yet is uh, saved filter sets. I can, uh, you know, you saw me filter down to, say, only Kafka servers before. If I were to save that filter, I would get a, a, a list in here of, that includes that now. So I've made one of these for each of our clusters. And I get, at a glance, a quick summary of how it's doing, right? I see that there are no active alerts happening for any of these because they're all green. If there had been alerts, then I would see part of the bar being yellow or red. But I'll go ahead and drill into my Kafka servers and uh, jump over to the storage page. Let's suppose that I have a problem with my Kafka disks using too much I.O. Um, I don't right now. They're, they seem to be running about you know, less than 1%, so that's good. But uh, let's say I had an issue a couple days ago, and I want to make sure that I know about it again. Now, I have two volumes on every server. You'll see I've got three hosts here, but it's listing six different uh, storage devices. And maybe I don't care about the root volume. We store all of our Kafka data on the uh, data one mount. So I'll filter to only those devices. And it's these ones that are most important to me. If, if these start filling up or having too much IO, then my Kafka cluster will really start slowing down. So I want to make an alert that only covers those. So I'll go ahead and take these filters and make an alert condition out of it. And I can then go ahead and say, uh, you know, let me know when total utilization is above 20% for two minutes. And, well, let's see, that's a bit low. I'll say 80% for two minutes. And maybe I need to get a warning when it's above 50%. And I've got uh, not only flexibility in terms of setting different thresholds here, um, but also we're using the standard, uh, the, the newer flavor of New Relic alerting system where you can control uh, 
for each condition who it's going to notify. So I can say, um, you know, I'm going to make a policy for my Kafka servers, and it's going to no notify some set of people on Slack or something like that, and then configure other alerts differently. So, so there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you get notified. And uh, of course, if I install a new Kafka server, uh, you know, we get a lot of questions as soon as we start talking about alerts. People ask, oh, I'm, you know, when I run Chef on a new machine, I need to obviously make an API call to set up an alert on it, right? Well, not necessarily. Uh, as long as you've done the proper configuration of the agent or if you're an EC2, set up a tag that says this is, you know, role equals Kafka or something like that, this alert will automatically cover it. And so, uh, you know, apart from like setting up a new cluster or something like that, that I haven't used before, uh, as soon as I set up the alerts, they will continue to grow or shrink with my infrastructure if I have like a bunch of ephemeral nodes or something like that. So that's a quick summary of alerts. Uh, let's talk about dashboards for a second. So all of the charts here, and I forgot to mention this earlier, but all of the charts here are backed by NRQL, essentially. All of this data is in Insights. And so if I'm looking at the view that I like, let's go ahead and just view a breakdown by, uh, by role again. Let's say I like this, uh, this load widget. This is a nice summary of how, how busy my infrastructure is. So I'll go ahead and hit this gear icon and do view and insights. That brings me over to insights and shows the actual Nurkle query that we're doing behind the scenes to populate that chart. I could tweak that if I wanted to. Um, I don't know, it looks okay to me. So I'll go ahead and add it to a dashboard. Let's see, staging health demo. And so I see that on this, art, and on this dashboard, I've already got a number of other things. So here's my load chart. I guess that's the new one I added, but I already had it there anyway. Um, but so here's my load chart. This is coming from infrastructure. But in the same dashboard, I have metrics coming in about our ELBs, which, uh, which uh, Karishma will talk about in a second. I also have some custom integration uh, with Kafka. This is actually a dashboard that we use. Um, this is our Kafka integration that shows custom Kafka lag metrics uh, in one widget. I can see using other infrastructure metrics, this is the same data that was showing on the process page. I can see, for example, how many containers are running on each host. So I can tell really quickly that, oh, this one right here, twofer is the name apparently, uh, only has two containers on it. Maybe I need to look at how we're balancing containers. Um, but I'm tying that in with other stuff, right? This is coming from APM, uh, service response time. This is coming from Synthetics, how long it takes to load our UI, and uh, some other custom ones. So um, it's really cool to be able to tie in the basic infrastructure health along with all the app data that we were tracking before. And back to you. So um, Matt showed us the power of these um, tags in the UI that basically let you create dynamic alerts that add and remove hosts as they come and go. Um, so you don't have to keep reconfiguring alerts and dashboards for your infrastructure. But I just want to mention a point about where, um, where these filters basically get populated from. So um, when, when Matt mentioned the uh, data that the agent collects, um, he mentioned some common metadata. So that's basically, um, so the filters that you see here are from, um, are from three different sources, or can be from three different sources. One, you have the most, um, you have the common metadata and attributes associated with your host, such as host name, OS version, um, the agent version it has installed, et cetera. The second source is actually our native AWS EC2 tag support. And what we mean by that, um, and I'll demo that in just a minute, but our, um, our agent comes with native support for AWS EC2 tags. Um, so basically, once you install the agent um, on your EC2 instances and um, configure the EC2 integration inside our product, these tags get automatically imported by the agent. So you don't actually have to configure and do additional work to get these tags in the filter, filter as well as uh, group by dropdowns. Our agent automatically imports them. Uh, and the third source is custom attributes and custom tags. So you have the option to create those, um, to basically leverage the tagging and filtering functionality for things that may not be on a cloud infrastructure. So, um, with that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about full stack visibility. So 
Infrastructure is cool. Um, it's giving me visibility into my host. It lets me do all of these cool things. But then again, you're not thinking about your infrastructure in a silo, just the same way you're not thinking about your apps in a silo. Um, your infrastructure is basically the foundation that's keeping your apps up and running. And ultimately, you care about your apps, you care about the business metrics, the value that it's bringing in. Um, and for that, keeping your infrastructure up and running is tremendously important. So when building this product, we kept an important point in mind, which is we want this to integrate with the rest of the stack, with the rest of the New Relic products, so our customers can get as much value and as much visibility um, to make their jobs simpler, basically. So New Relic infrastructure out of the box comes with native integration with our New Relic APM, Application Performance Monitoring product, for full stack visibility. Um, so I'll demo that in a minute. And of course, a bunch of native integrations. So these include integrations like um, a, a set of AWS integrations currently, such as RDS, SQS, S3, IAM, Kinesis, and the list goes on and on. And of course, we'll keep adding to these. Um, so, With that, um, I'll just quickly demo. All right, so what do you need to do in order to leverage um, the integration with APM? Basically, not much. You have the APM, install, APM agent installed on your app servers. Once you drop the infrastructure agent on those hosts, you'll get um, the agents basically talk to each other and know that they both exist on the same host and you'll start seeing your application data inside of infrastructure. So right down here, um, and I'll zoom in a little, that's what it looks like. So if you have the APM agent installed, you'll see this chart appear at the bottom on your compute page. And what this allows me to do is basically see my most um, useful application metrics such as response time, throughput, error rate, et cetera, um, in the context of my infrastructure. So why is this useful? Um, this is useful because let's say I'm experiencing a high application error rate, just like I am right here. I can basically zoom in or not. Actually, if you wanna switch, uh, quick, quick side note, I actually got paged about 20 minutes before this, uh, this session we didn't make this up. <laughs> no. <laughs> so let's actually look at how that works. We should actually have some interesting data in that UI. <laughs> so let's see, hour ago. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah, so we can see that uh, around this point in time, uh, the load on our Elasticsearch cluster went nuts. All right, internet. There it goes. All right. So the, the CPU and load on our Elasticsearch cluster went up pretty high. But if I scroll down a little bit, I can track the uh, the response time of an application that was affected. I guess the graph's not all, all that interesting, but uh, let's see if throughput's any different. Yeah. Okay. Well, almost. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so if, if I had seen that been uh, affecting one of our applications a lot, then I could see in the response time that it uh, would have jumped up there. Yep. Um, yeah, so similar to um, not just being able to correlate your host health metrics, so seeing your CPU spike along with um, and correlating them with the, the change events that are happening um, during that time frame, so just if I move my cursor around, but I can also correlate an application metric with that. So I can see that my application response time was high at this point in time, and I can basically scroll through the page to see what my CPU memory load as well as the change events that occurred at that point in time for basically a single pane of glass visibility. So on this one single page tells me what, my app, what, um, what was changing in my infrastructure at that point in time, how it impacted the health of my hosts and what its impact on my application and consequently my business metrics were. Um, so that's, that's interesting, but I also wanna demo the second part of um, and how you can monitor 
your infrastructure in the context of your applications. So let's say one of your devs walks up to you and says, hey, we're experiencing a problem with um, XYZ application. You don't necessarily always know um, or have real-time visibility into exactly what set of app servers have that application instance deployed on them. So infrastructure makes it easier by allowing you to filter down to an application name. So if I basically click on filter, application name, I have a list of all my applications in here and I can click on any one of the applications. Oh, this one just has one host running on it. But basically I can click on any one application name to see the set of hosts that have that application instance running on them and just evaluate the app metrics as well as the infrastructure metrics for that application. And just as I previously mentioned, these filters persist across pages. So if having filtered down to an application name, I can switch over to events to see what the events occurring on the host that have that application deployed on them are, um, which in this case isn't very interesting right now. So that's basically our out of the box integration with APM, New Relic APM. Um, and of course, we have the second side of the coin, which is infrastructure context inside of APM. Um, so APM has, um, if you have infrastructure and APM, um, APM will provide you with infrastructure context by providing you links um, to the host names, which when you click on, bring you inside of infrastructure pre-filtered down to that host. Um, so that's interesting, but um, what about other parts of my infrastructure that don't necessarily fall under the host or the servers category? Um, we understand that in a, in a dynamically changing com complex infrastructure, you have services in the cloud um, that are part of your infrastructure but aren't hosts, and that's where integrations comes in. So we support um, and Maybe I can go to an account that doesn't have integration set up just so you can see what that looks like. So out of the box, we have support for um, this, set, these, this set of integrations right now. Um, and of course, this list will keep growing on and on. Um, but basically, the setup is very simple. So if I click on any one, I have all the instructions here so I know exactly what I need to do. So I don't need to switch over and view my Amazon API documentation to figure out exactly how to grant access. Um, so I can view the instructions here. Well and good, go next. And you can see how simple it is. All I need to do is provide my account name and ARN and I'm good to go. So once I provide my account name and ARN, um, So once I provide my account name and ARN, the, the integration has been configured, and what this provides me are out-of-the-box, pre-baked, pre-configured dashboards that provide you with the most useful metrics for these AWS services and integrations that you have set up. So you have the option to um, click on any one of these, and it takes you to a, a pre-configured, like I just said, dashboard inside of Insights that shows you all um, the metrics associated with your integration. So you can see request per second. You can also click on this to expand the query and see what it is and modify it if you'd like, um, or pin this to a different dashboard. So if you have a dashboard that shows you your APM data, your synthetics browser mobile data, you can pin this chart to that dashboard to get additional insights. Um, you have the documentation, um, right here so you can view additional details. You can create an alert condition. So infrastructure from the ground up has been built on the New Relic platform um, and this allows us to leverage New Relic's new alerting um, feature or functionality, platform functionality that we demoed yesterday. And th so this allows you to create an alert condition basically with the same alerting platform, which is pretty cool. Um, so you have all your policies, your notification channels, everything pre-set up and ready for you, available for you. So you can see the metrics and that's really interesting, um, but what I particularly find interesting and so do our users are these two um, 
these two widgets down here on the dashboard, which basically show you your events and inventory for your AWS services. So you may have had access to metrics for ELB before, may, 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 maybe not, but um, this right here not only shows you your metrics, but also shows you your events in real time, just the same way it did with your um, traditional hosts and um, cloud infrastructure. So now you can see um, if, let's say you spin up a new cluster of EC2 or uh, someone made a config change to one of your AWS services. It appears here, so you can see all of your changes in real time, you can scroll through this list to see that, um, as well as your inventory. So you have all of your inventory with your AWS services listed right here. So, and of course it comes with um, pre-configured dashboards, so if you set up, um, if you set up these integrations, you can have a whole list of dashboards um, ready at your disposal to use. Um, and you have the option to create an alert and or explore the data, which basically takes you back to insights to the data explorer feature where you have all of these events and metrics um, ready for you to customize, run queries on, uh, pin charts the dashboards for, etc. cetera. Um, so going back to the slides. So like I said, um, the integrations feature is available um, in the 30-day trial as well as it's part of the Pro uh, subscription, so Infrastructure Pro. Um, what this gives you is it allows you to monitor all of your infrastructure in a single place. So when we built this product, we kept in mind um, that your infrastructure comprises of more things than just your hosts and your servers, and that's exactly what we aim to do, which is monitor all of your infrastructure in a single product, in a single place. Event tracking and inventory for your AWS services. Um, the infrastructure pro SKU that um, basically has the integrations feature comes with 13 months of data retention, so you can do a year-over-year -year annual analysis of any of your metrics um, in case you have conferences or big events for which you require scaling and you want to go back and see what your data looked like last year. Um, you can do that with the 13 months data retention. And of course, it comes with alerting on New Relic's um, new alerting platform, which basically allows you to use the same policies and notifications, no notification channels that you have set up for all of your alerts, including your host alerts as well as your AWS service alerts. So with that, really encourage you all to go and try out um, New Relic Infrastructure. It's a free 30-day trial. You can go to newrelic.com slash infrastructure and sign up for it. Um, you don't require a credit card to sign up for it. Um, and as Matt previously mentioned, the deployment of the agent is very easy. You can talk to some of our customers by the booth who uh, can testify to that. Um, so drop the agent, um, no configuration required. You have the option to do it if you'd like. And um, within a couple of minutes, you can start seeing the data flow, flow in and try it out. So start your 30-day trial of Infrastructure Pro today. Thank you. <laughs>